One of the things that makes Man Bat such a fun character is the fact that even though he's a villain, he really isn't. He might be seen as the bad guy in most traditional Batman stories because he's this giant, out of control, bat human monster. But the reality is, he's suffering from this Jekyll and Hyde type scenario. But even the Mr. Hyde persona isn't really a bad guy. He's often enraged and misunderstood, but that's because he's more of an animal than a person. He's more of the bat than the man, as opposed to Batman, who's more of the man than the bat. But part of what makes this particular series so interesting is that the writer has chosen to make Man Bat the bat side, the less human side, the Mr. Hyde side, more human, I guess you could say. He fights for more control. He fights for more of his identity. He's less animalistic, and he's more aware of the fact that he's dying. His body is breaking down, and unless he can find a way to actually cure the disease that he created for himself by manipulating the genes, trying to cure his sister's deafness, he's going to die. And it makes him sympathetic, even though he is technically the bad guy. And throughout this series, he is dealing with the consequences of his own actions. In the first issue, he makes a bunch of bad guys go deaf by overdoing an attack with a sonic weapon, and now he has to continually face them as they work for the Scarecrow, as the Scarecrow now wants the sonic weapon for himself. He also has created more problems with his sister, we'll say. She really doesn't want to be cured of her deafness because she doesn't see it as being that big of a handicap. She is, we'll say, handicapable. And yet his continued insistence that he needs to cure her often leads to a lot of problems between them. The biggest problem, however, is with his wife, Francine. And in issue four, we find that Langstrom, Kirk, and Francine are stuck together in a made-up reality created by the Scarecrow, where they think they're living this idyllic life. Everything is perfect and wonderful, and they're just working together to perfect this uh, sonic beam weapon um, just because they are scientists doing research. And yet, somehow, the bat side of Man-Bat knows that something is wrong. It's a delusion. It's a lie. At the same time, Batman is trying to track down Man Bat. He knows Scarecrow's involved. He knows that the Black Hole gang is still out there and they're woven into all of this. And he's trying to figure out what exactly is happening. And there's some sort of extra secret ingredient, something that's hinted at the end of issue three, which appears here towards the end of issue four, some sort of bonus secret that Kirk Langstrom knows is going to be what he needs in order to, well, I don't want to spoil it. I really don't. I, I like this series a lot. They've done a lot of neat things with Man Bat. He's a character that a lot of times is often dealt with as just this crazy lunatic who goes out and beats people up and then Batman has to come and beat him down, give him some sort of antidote that turns him back into the human, and then lock him back away until the next time he breaks free. 
But this series really makes him into a character that you not only care about, but you actually want to see this story come to fruition because there is a life that hangs in the balance. Now, I'm pretty sure we're going to see this series end with maybe some sort of stabilization of Kirk Langstrom. It's going to go back to the status quo where, um, you know, he's just going to revert back to Man Bat at some point in the future, but at least he's not dying anymore. That's probably the best case scenario we're going to get out of this because comics is a ever continuing medium and it needs the characters to ever continue. But at the same time, it's doing a lot of good with really building a dynamic relationship between Kirk and his wife, having fun with Scarecrow and making him into that classic Scarecrow character that we remember from years past, and making Batman into the Dark Knight detective uh, that we really haven't seen a lot in the comics in the last few years. And again, this comic is set in pre-Infinite Frontier times. So Alfred is here, which is always welcome. So this story is set firmly in a good period in the time of Batman and is telling a good story about Man Bat. I will continue to praise the artwork by Sumit Kumar even though I'm pretty sure I just pronounced his name incorrectly. I really like his art style. It has that classic Norm Brayfogle look to it, and with a Batman story, that really fits well. It's dynamic, it's edged, it's sharp. It does a great job of conveying emotion from panel to panel. I think one of the biggest strengths that it has is that you're never left wondering who's speaking, where the action is coming from, uh, which character is which. Every piece of the story that needs to tell its part is doing exactly what it needs to do. It's a great part of storytelling. And in fact, even when there's a two-page spread, and generally I tend to dislike those because I feel most of the time it takes away from the overall story. He uses the space to show what's actually happening. For instance, we know that Scarecrow has the Langstroms in this delusional universe where everything is perfect. And we've seen shots of them living this perfect life, but then how the reality of the world around them is actually reflected in the broken down warehouse that they're actually hidden in. And in this two page spread, we can see the layout of this giant warehouse that they're in. The writer refers to it as a dollhouse that they're stuck in. And the artwork conveys this perfectly. You can see all the rooms of their perfect life as they do this research, as they're living together, as they're having this wonderful life. But you can see that they're all broken down and torn apart and they're just this fake reality that they're unable to escape from. Now on top of that we do have colors here from Romulo Fajardo Jr. and again I've probably butchered that horribly but he does another fantastic job in keeping the colors dark and muted while they're in this nightmare world uh, when Man Bat is uh, stuck in the fake reality where everything is supposed to be this uh, wonderful laboratory. They are bright and vivid and colorful. And when the true reality breaks through, once again, they are dark and muted. When Batman is there, they have this uh, hazy twilight glow of the outside world. And when the action gets uh, quick and frantic, we see a lot of uh, bright pops of energy and uh, the attacks uh, have this extra uh, impulses and slams that come from the bright 
colors that pop out of the backgrounds and add emphasis to everything that's happening around them. So the colors are adding a lot to the artwork, which is exactly how it should be. Again, we're getting 20 pages of story for $3.99, which is the new industry standard from Marvel and DC. And again, I wish there were more pages at that price, but what are you going to do? Now, I will say that for the 20 pages that we get, this story moves along quite nicely. Uh, even though most of the story takes place within the fake reality dollhouse that the Scarecrow has created, the actual movement of the story for the characters continues along rather well. Now, this book has been presented more of a character piece for Man Bat than some giant plot-driven, um, action-centric, blockbuster movie type of story. So, we want more character moments from the book, and we're getting that in this story. So, for the 20 pages of story that we get, there may not be as many big fights, there may not be a lot of chases, we're not getting a lot of transitions from location to location um, as a lot of time passes, but we're getting the character beats and the story elements that we want to see from a story like this. So I think for the $3.99, we're getting exactly what we want for the price we're paying in this day and age. Overall, there's not a lot to complain about with Mambat number four. I mean, really, the only complaints you can nitpick with are you need to read one, two, and three to understand what's going on in four, and you're going to need five to get the full resolution of the story. But since it is a five-issue miniseries, there's not a lot you can do about that type of situation. But again, for being part of this ongoing miniseries, for being the chapter that we're getting in this issue, this issue is very well done. The price is fair. The story is fantastic. The art is great. I'm really enjoying Man Bat. And with the people I've spoken to, it turns out I'm not the only one who gave this book a chance for no reason other than there's very little on the stands that we're attracted to these days and found that this story has been exactly the type of book we've been looking for.